Welcome to Good Mythical More. You've got a corn, and then lo and behold, there's a totally different baby corn. And I just wonder which one tastes better. I, mean, I wonder the same. And we have that for other things too. Or do we? But we also have a random disturbing fact. Disturb me. The CPR dummy face template is based on a dead 16 year old girl's face. Named Annie? Is it, is it Annie? Her body was pulled from the river Seine in the 1880s and her cause of death and identity were never discovered. A mortician was so entranced by her peaceful expression that he made a plaster mask of her, which became the face of CPR dummies and health training equipment. What? That's disturbing. Well, she, she lives on forever and, you know. Annie, are you okay? Wow. Are you okay, Annie? That's uh, where that lyric comes from. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. when I sat in on my mom's uh, EMT class, that's what they would say. They would lean over the mannequin and they were taught to say, you have to communicate to see if the person can respond. And the way they would do that is they would say, Annie, are you okay? And also, are you okay, the, Annie? The pace of the CPRs, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Are you okay? I don't think it is. Don't take that was medical a, advice. That's a different song. <laughs> so is that a crab apple or a baby apple? I believe it's a baby apple. What is a, I didn't know that was a thing. Well, you know what a regular apple is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know what a regular apple is. So I'm gonna taste this. This is a uh, Red Delicious, perhaps? No. This is a, a Fuji apple. <laughs> a Fuji? A Red Delicious. Gala. Ga Gala. A, a Red Delicious is like super red. Oh. Do you guys have apples at your house? Anybody eat apples? We do, but no one eats them. I don't know why they're there. Shepherd eats apples a lot. So I started. Um, this is the same thing, just small? A baby gala? Mm -mm. Crab. <laughs> so is, it is called a crab apple. This is like the ones we used to find growing up, man. I thought a crab apple was like a different thing entirely. Well, I really don't know. I think it is, but it's really hard to bite. It's good though. I really like the flavor. It doesn't pop. I think the little ones are better than the big ones. There's a lot more skin per bite on the little one. When mm. is the last time you ate a complete apple? When you start eating an apple, you don't finish till it's gone? No. Because even you, I don't think would do that. You mean core and all? Let's start with not core. We have one of those apple slicers. <laughs> that just keeps the core out. That's the ticket, dude. And then I eat all, I, all of it except the core. Because then you can dip it in some honey, peanut butter mixture. That's the ticket. They really are so good for you. You should really have an apple a day. I mean, really? Re yeah. Great fiber. Great fiber. <laughs> Is that all? Uh, nutrients. I love fiber. Vitamins. Man. To me, sometimes it's it's exactly what I wanted. I find that it's exactly what I wanted. I'm a little bit hungry, but I a don't want to do something stupid. Apples never satisfy, though. Everyone thinks that, but everyone who says that doesn't end up eating them. You say apples don't satisfy and then you don't eat them because of that. But if you were to eat them, you'd be like, oh, that apple is actually fairly satisfying. I feel I'm like the most satisfying an apple is, apple is, <laughs> is like if, you, if you're on a long hike or you're like camping, you're doing something outdoorsy and then you just are like, I can eat this fruit. Yep. You know? And yep. then it's, there is something yeah. about biting into a completed by nature thing. Yep. It's a whole food they call that. Everything we have here is whole. Now, this is, this is a big I went through a carrot phase too. As a child, like a full size carrot phase. As, yeah, I, my, I, um, one of the first things I learned how to do was peel a carrot. <laughs> one of the first things you learn how to do? Yeah, first, one of the first things I remember learning how to do like, was Like what about talking, walking? <laughs> I don't remember those. And the first thing I remember, I was already talking and walking. Look at that little. And learning to peel a carrot. Look at that little baby. Yeah, he, he can barely lift his head, but he can peel a carrot. 
I like a carrot. I like, I like um, the sound it makes in my head when I eat it. It makes you feel like something. That's, that's a good thing about apples too, is that the sound it makes in your head when you bite it. Did you say something about the apple uh, preference? I, I do not like the little apples there because there's too much skin. I prefer, per bite. I prefer them. Why, because of the taste? I just thought it tasted better. Can you tear those baby apples in half? Oh, Chase, I would love to see you do that. <laughs> All right, Chase is coming in. He's gonna do what he does best, but on a baby apple. Look at this, this is exciting. <laughs> Shrip it open. This is exciting. Remember the noise. <laughs> that was very satisfying. Oh, thank you very much. As a reward, you can have it. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that's you. not. So that was a baby sound. It was a baby sound. It was the baby sound. Yeah. Version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hoping you were gonna do it, <laughs> but I didn't say anything. So I, these baby apple. I mean uh, carrots. I was told that these are baby cut carrots, and that baby carrots are a completely different thing. Which I guess is something that if I had really thought about it, I would have known is true. But I think there might just be other carrot species that are small, but Carney, you were saying well, that there are carrots that are cut like are like harvested early. Yeah, this was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the blame on this. I thought this was a different type of carrot. I thought it was too. Okay, good. Thank you. So you're what? telling me what <laughs> that this is the tip of a big carrot. No, it's just part, it's like, see how they're all uniformly shaped as if a machine just went through and punched carrot out? That's uh, what that is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so like, you can make this into those. Yeah. They do make this into these. They yes. do. Because like, if you take that and you line it up like this, there's some that are bigger, <laughs> and then you're gonna get. That guy's gonna make a carrot right here. <laughs> so what they would do is they would do that. They, they chop it up and then they round it to fool us dumb Americans. Americans into thinking that this just grew this way. I'm so confused why there are so many people in this room who thought that was the case. I if you thought that, mention it in the comments. And if you knew better, don't say anything at all, and then we'll realize we'll be able to take it out. <laughs> well, I said in this room. <laughs> Now, Th this right here is, 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 is totally unnecessary, and I bet you there's reams of people who are saying this shouldn't exist. It's wasteful. What do they do with the extra carrot? Give it to babies? Oh, yeah, they use it for um, farm animals. I hope they do. Because there's a lot of extra carrot. I mean, look at that. Well, okay. And then yes, the middle of the carrot. it's a prepared food situation, but you gotta think about, what about all those school kids? Well, you know, you, you're gonna wake up as a, as a parent, you're gonna have to shave your carrot, and then You're and gonna then do what I did up. as a kid. You can't send First a, thing I learned, how to no, shave a carrot. You can't send no. a kid to school with something that big like that. Exactly, that. that's a weapon. Right, they'll get, weapon. they'll get escorted home real quick. Yeah. First thing I learned how to do was the use of a sharp object. But it, but it's one of those that it can't, it really can't hurt you. Were you peeling carrots for the family or are you just doing it for yourself? I would peel a carrot before I would eat it. I would grab a carrot out of the fridge and I would peel it, which I shouldn't have been doing. You're afraid, should have just been you're washing afraid it. of the outside? Should it, yeah, should have just been washing it. Like a potato. Now, I like a, I like a full carrot over these because this is, this is an unnecessary industry. And the taste is no different. I think if, if you were gonna hand me a big carrot or a bunch of little carrots that were made from a big carrot, and I wasn't thinking about the ethical implications, I would prefer the smaller carrots. Just to be honest with you. It's all clean and nice and uniform. I like that. Now, this isn't the same species, is it? No. You see how that looks like you couldn't take a big corn and then cut that out of it? Right. Yeah. No, you couldn't. But is it the same but thing? Is it something that if you left left this on its own, it would turn no. into that? No, 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 no. It certainly tastes like it could be. I don't know, Stevie. You ever taken one of these and planted it in the ground? Did it turn into a big corn? <laughs> I'm not. So a baby corn, you're eating the cob because it's floppy. It's a floppy cob. Is there even any corn on it? I think it's just a cob. It takes a long time for a cob to get hard. It's just a soft cob. There's actually no corn on this. I don't know. Are you a hundred percent sure this is a different thing? Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. 
actually, according to this fact sheet that <laughs> Emily's reminding me of, the tiny ears are the second ear from the top of regular sweet corn that's been handpicked before the plant's been fertilized. This is corn that grows on top of corn? Tiny ears are the second ear from the top. Oh! These are at the very top of the corn stalk. It's a little corn that didn't no, have time to no, become full they're corn. The they're second the second from the top. second ear from the top. Well, the top, yeah, it's just I like see a clown the, head. I want to oh, see you know what's what? at the top. I want to apologize to all my baby carrot people because I didn't know that. Who knew about the second ear? You mean corn. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it tastes like corn. This is legit. I would like, like to see the harvesting process of the tiny, of the baby corn. Oh, they get children to do it. They said they do it by hand before it's fertilized. They get very tall children to do it. Really tall it with one, little hands. Yeah. So it's just one, like one stalk and then the second ear of that stalk. So every stalk produces one baby corn? That's why they're a lot more expensive. Are they? I mean, per ounce. Stevie's questioning everything now. I really am. Per ounce, yeah, little corn is way more expensive than big corn. Now, I just feel like the on, farmers always talk about though. the big corn. Big corn tastes better, I think. I'm I'm blown away by the baby corn. It's like eating the entire cob, but it all tastes like corn. Just make this bigger. God. <laughs> make this bigger, God. Come on, God. Did you get the memo, God? We want corn to be different. We can make it different, man. I'm gonna I'm I'm start my own corn, little list called Letters to God. God's corn is not like that anyway. This is man's corn. Yeah, this, right. This is, this is genetically modified out to wazoo, man. All this stuff. Right. right. We made it work for us. I'm going with baby corn. Great on salads. Before this turns into a really heated food debate, I do wanna uh, remind you that there's a very special announcement regarding the Hot Dog as a Sandwich uh, podcast. That Which the is the Kitchen place does. for food debates. It is. Uh, there's a video version now, and you know what? They got their own YouTube channel, and the first video is out right now. You can go over there right after this and watch that episode, that video episode of A Hot Dog as a Sandwich every Friday. Subscribe to that uh, channel, youtube.com slash a hot dog as a sandwich. New video every Friday, all right? Watch them talk. A lot, of people, a lot of people look at, um, they listen to podcasts on YouTube. A lot uh, of people listen to this show as if it were a podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do other things. Yeah. I think not enough people are talking about baby corn, and we're trying <laughs> to get some real good images on Google of harvesting, and, you know, it is a kept secret at this point. There are not any great images. Wow. Really? I'm over here on Cornhub, and I can't find a single thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to be a paying subscriber. Oh. Yeah, if you want to get the good pictures, <laughs> you got to fork out that monthly, that monthly fee, man. Um, okay. I'm not looking forward to this. So here's a tomato. I and have been a, known. Here's a baby tomato. I have been known to eat got? a tomato. Now, really, in the South, uh, unless you're Link, uh, or in people who agree with him, a tomato sandwich is a thing that is very common because tomatoes grow so big and ripe, and you get a good, nice, ripe tomato in the right part of the season. Mm. People will take those tomatoes, slice them up, put them on white bread with mayonnaise and salt and pepper, Gotta get an amen, everybody. Everybody had it done that. Yeah, that's right. That's a good thing. I have never had one of those. I have never had one of those in California. And I'm sure I could. I know there's good tomatoes here. It's just, I've never thought it's a tomato sandwich. Oh, no, sandwich there's day. a good, like an heirloom, like one of those oh. sandwiches with an heirloom. Oh. Well, the thing I told oh. Link recently heirloom. is that you can't judge tomatoes by this kind of tomato that you just get at the grocery store. Yeah, yeah, you got to bite into or at least experiment with an heirloom tomato, which is a completely different texture, pl flavor profile. But because this is all we have, what's a what is what's an heirloom tomato? What is it? What do you mean by that? Can we show them a picture of one of those? You talking about a garden grown tomato? They're bigger. They're they're. It's not a monoculture. They're very uh, not uniform. 
and they're like different bumpy. colors, and a lot of times they're really big and they're okay. real staky. They're great. I, I'm I'm not gonna even bite into this. I, I hate it. I really do hate it. And um, I can I think I can do this, and to prove it, like that's not a great tomato. I'm gonna attempt it. But those right there on the screen, Link, man, I could get lost in that. I could get lost in that. But I hate I hate it so bad. We always have these. You know the little thing you get at the grocery store that that you you pull the plastic off the top and it's yeah. full of these. Uh, we always have one of those in our house, and e like uh, I'll go weeks where every night right before I go to bed, like mm, well I'm hungry, but I'll just allow, allow myself a couple of tomatoes. <laughs> you eat a couple. Oh, of the flavor is so much better on those little ones. It it there is a tang to it, but yeah, <laughs> I love them. Don't like it, man. Don't like. I'm gonna have to go back to this. I'm gonna go back to my carrot. <laughs> when you eat a carrot, it's so earthy. It feels like you know. It feels like you're eating the earth. Yeah, that's why. That's why it's not like great. It's, it's it's um. You are. It's a root. It really gives you a clarity. It's a sense of clarity. I do. I do really good for your eyes. I do really respect how the carrot just decided it was just gonna go hard and straight down. Right. Versus other roots that are like, ah, oh, we can't really make up our mind. Well, let's just try everything. You know, the carrot is yeah. just very decisive. Just like we're, decisive. we're getting in the ground, and we're all going deep, as deep as we can. I'm Everything's going, going for right for the one spot. Right, a, a carrot is the most decisive of vegetables. This is the most decisive of vegetables. Right, I respect that carrot, like a, as opposed to a potato, which is lazy. Potato's kind of like, Urgh. right, a very lazy yeah. vegetable. Yeah, yeah, and a radish is sort of like, yep. A radish. Different, different a, roots make different sounds. A radish had a lot of great ideas and then just kind of petered out. So, yep, right. Because it goes to the point. Right. It's very. It seems very enthusiastic and then it just goes to this little white tip. Arr. What do we have here? We have artichoke hearts. Check out our our new series, Root Sounds. <laughs> I don't. I don't really want to eat this either. You don't like artichokes. Artichoke hearts are kind of like. The seafood of the garden, you know, it's like, look at that. It looks like, looks like an oyster. I would think that the cucumber is the seafood of the garden, but that's just me. Um, there is a no, lot the of sea cucumber is the vegetable of, of the, the ocean. Sea. So there's so much of an artichoke is not worth eating, but this is the very and this is like we Indiana Jones Temple of Doomed an artichoke plant and got this out of the middle of it, and now we're holding it up. And everyone's closing their eyes. But it's not that much smaller. It's not that much bigger than this one. Yeah, I am confused. I mean, what happened here? I think, is are baby artichoke hearts just slightly yeah. smaller regular hearts? It's a, this is, I'm new to a baby artichoke as well, but it's a smaller but fully mature version of a traditional artichoke on an artichoke plant. The higher up the stalk, the larger the potential artichoke size so they're harvested lower down. The bigger ones are lower, or the no bigger ones are higher. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Opposite of the corns. Okay, well I've never thought about playing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna this taste way. the baby one. I guess this here. There's one. there's so many things about plants that I didn't know. I wish I had studied plants more. <laughs> this is not. There's uh, this is not redemptive. I just don't can't think of anything about that. I like artichoke. And is there a difference? Mm. Well, it's just sopped in oil. I mean, I think that's the part that's good is the oil that is right. Like. I mean, did you notice a difference? This is on you. I'm I'm out. Nope, there's no difference. I mean, it's not as bad as an olive, but it there's a it's 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 flirting with that world and. It's getting into. It's just not a place uh, I'm. I'm buying a ticket. I to. think that might be why I like it. I go to the. You know the. Uh, another place that I love to stop at the grocery store is the Olive Bar. I know you do. Ooh, that place, man. You're a good boy. I'll man. spend a good amount of time there. You're a good Olive Boy. And uh, the. You know what? The. Uh, what do you call it? the sleeper hit? What do you call it when something is good and no one knows about it? The dark horse. That's one way to talk about it. The dark horse of the olive bar is those marinated mushrooms. Good Lord, have you had those? <laughs> the ones that are marinated in garlic and they're just mushrooms and they're in garlic. Anybody know what I'm saying? Can I get an amen? Amen. 
Hey, <laughs> Chase knows what I'm talking about. Today, if you know what's good for you, go to the olive bar, go to the marinated mushrooms. They're tangy, they're in some kind of vinegar and oil, and they've got uh, garlic cloves in there. Grab some of those, put them in a, go home, take a toothpick, have a have the time of your life. It's right before you go to bed. I, I've done that too, if I get one of those, I'll get a couple of little tomatoes and a couple of mushrooms and go straight to bed. Sleep. I know you have. Sleep like a baby artichoke. <laughs> I know, I know you have. The best food podcast out there, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, now has its own YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. New videos every Friday.